Let's begin to pray for our campus. As we're here back at U of H campus, nothing shall remain the same because the water of God is flowing in this campus. The water of God, hey, is yielding fruit in this campus. The water of God is bringing life in this campus of U of H. Ha! The water of God, ha! The water of God is flowing in abundance in this place. Nothing shall remain the same. Ha! As we're preparing for this welcome back, Father, oh Lord, let your presence be filled in this campus, in all this campus. What you want to do in this campus, Father, Lord, do it in the name of Jesus Christ. Lord, we ask you, we ask you with all our thanksgiving that you go ahead and perform the sign and wonders that you want to do in this campus, in the name of Jesus Christ. Father, Lord, thank you, Lord. In this campus, Lord, prepare the way. In this campus, Lord, prepare the way, oh Father Lord, prepare the way. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. So, Father Lord, we commit this service in your hands. Let the bread from heaven fall in this place. Oh, give us life. Take control of this service from the beginning to the ending, Lord. As we have stepped in this room, we shall not get out of this place remaining the same. We shall be transformed by your spirit in the name of Jesus Christ. Refresh that anointing that you have placed in us, O oh Lord. Father Lord, refresh this anointing that you have placed in us, O oh Lord. That fire, ignite that fire that is inside of us, O oh Lord. That we will stand where we are. We will not go anywhere and stand with you at all time, no matter what. Stand for you at all time, no matter what. Stand in you at all time, no matter what. We partake, oh Father Lord. We're standing on your side, no matter what. Thank you, Lord. Oh Lord, thank you, Lord. Jehovah, thank you, Lord. Jesus, thank you, Lord. Oh. You are worthy to be praised, O oh God. You are majesty, majesty sitting upon your throne, Father Lord. We are in your presence, O oh Father Lord. We worship you. You are welcome. 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 You are welcome, O oh Lord. We welcome you. Thank you, Lord. Let our ears hear you this morning. Let our heart receive you this morning. Ha! We know that what you're about to do this morning is big. So enlarge our heart. Enlarge the capacity of our heart to receive your presence this morning, O oh Lord, like never before. We welcome you. Oh, the Lamb of God. We welcome you. We welcome you. We welcome you. We celebrate you. We give you all glory. We give you all honor. We give you all praise. Oh Lord, we love you. In Jesus' name we are praying. Praise the Lord. You may be seated. Today's Bible reading will be taking place from Luke chapter 11, verse 1 through 4. Luke chapter 11, verse 1 through 4. And it says, Now it came to pass, as he was praying in a certain place, when he sees that one of his disciples said to him, Lord, teach us to pray, as John also taught his disciples. So he said to them, When you pray, say, Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us day by day our daily bread, and forgive us, forgive us our sins, for we also forgive everyone who has embittered in to us. And do not lead us into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. Amen. Uh, 
of your promise Don't speak away the syllables and your
Alleluia. Thank you, Father. Glory be to your holy name. Alleluia. Alleluia. I want to open your Bible with me this morning to the book of Matthew chapter 6, from verse 9 to 10. Matthew chapter 6, 9 and 10. Matthew chapter 6, 9 and 10. Are we all there? All right, we're going to rise up together on our feet. And we are going to sound this word from the bottom of our hearts. Shall we go? After this manner, therefore pray ye. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, that we be done in earth as it is in heaven. Today, I'm going to be sharing with you that we be done in our home. Mighty God of heaven, we appreciate you. We give you all the praise. We give you all the glory. No man obtains anything except he is given to by God. As your word is proceeding this morning from this altar, I submit myself in your content of your will that you will give your heart to your people. You will release your mind to your people. And everyone who is standing under the sound of this voice will obtain their deliverance today at the end of the day. We obtain their healing today. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name, we've all declared. Hallelujah. All right. The will be done in our home. There are really found important key word in this title today is the will of God. And I will, will make me to look into what will really means from our literary uh, dictionary hallelujah we'll be talking about the will somebody want to get something done with all seriousness he said i will when somebody says i shall you know that is probabilistic when somebody said i will is another level. I think we need to clarify what the will, what is the meaning of will, and then we can go further from there. Hallelujah. Now, what is the meaning of will? It is the act or process of willing. It is the power of control over one's own actions or emotions. It is called an intent. It is also Divine as a mental power manifested as wishing, choosing, desiring, and intending. All right? And so, will, will also do with the motive behind every doing. You know, man, naturally, uh, if we do things, we either do things either from absent minded mindedness or we do things with present mindedness. And today we're going to clarify some things out. We're talking about the will of God be done in our home. All right. Aside the will of Satan, there are three types of will. Number one, the will of the flesh, the will of the man, and the will of God. Are you going to ask me where do I get that from? The scripture is clear about what will is all about. The scripture, it is spoken word of God, and we've been told, commanded, that we have to consult the scripture for the interpretation of things. And so I, I 
support biological reasoning as a, so generally as a for scientific reasoning. But when it comes to the word of God, there is no amount of science that can replace the stipulated word of God. Hallelujah. Before there was science, the word of God has ever existed. And the scripture is clearing out what type of will that is obtainable in the whole world, in the universe. Hallelujah. If you look at the book of John chapter 1, verse 13. John chapter 1, verse 13. Say, who were born not of blood, not of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. We can see that clearly there. There is a will we call the will of the flesh. And there is a will we call the will of man. And there is a will we call the will of God. This aside from the will of the devil himself. Hallelujah. So God has made him to be by his own will. Now let's look at focus thoroughly. Let's look at start from the will of the flesh. What is the will of the flesh? How does the Bible, the word of God, explain the will of the flesh? Hallelujah. Now listen carefully. God has created our head. To be an interface between our hearts and the outside world. Hallelujah. It is our heart that communicates with God. And the communication our heart receives is sent this to our head. And then our head transferred to the entire world. Now you remember what Jesus said? It's from the abundance of the heart. The mouth speaks. Now, let me clarify that very well. The will of the flesh is simply the sitting, okay, of the mind of the head. So, in the mind of the head, we have the will of the head, I mean, will of the flesh assisting. And let me like make it clear to you in the beginning, when God created Adam and Eve, where God decided to give them free will to make a choice. Free will to decide what they want to do. Now, listen carefully. The Lord is not trying to do that to punish them. God is actually demonstrating his love to humanity. Simply giving humanity the free will to make a choice. We are told that human beings are created in the image of God. And so, God wants to be complete, perfect in his creation. So, he created people in semblance of him. So, he gives a will to a man to make a choice. And when he gives a will to a man to make a choice, he puts one will inside his heart. We call it, it's actually situated in the mind of the heart of human beings. So, he also created a will that has to do with the intellect. I want all of you to pay attention today because this needs to be broken down clearly. So that we don't go out there and getting confused, uh, getting toast here and there by string doctrine. God also created a will in the temple of the brain, the head, called intellect. Alright? So, the interaction... Of the intellect with the will of the heart is what brings things into reality. Hallelujah. And when God created this, God has expected that the intellect will be guided by the will of your mind. I'm still going to talk about that in a little while. So God expects that. Man should be able to freely, if he wants to demonstrate love towards them, they should be able to freely make their own choice. And so you can see what happened. He said, do not eat of that, the fruit of that tree. But here came the enemy, the, the devil. How did he come? He come through words. Hallelujah. 
So, what did the devil manipulate? The devil was able to interact with the will of the head, which is the mind of the head. Hallelujah. Have you ever found yourself in a situation in life where you do things and say, Oh, what did I just do? You did something and discover later that I didn't even take it through. That is the process of meditation before doing things. There's no process of taking through from your heart before doing things. So, but for actually, God created the action of your intellect to interact with your heart. So that it can be under control. Hallelujah. So you have got a certain situation where I do something and say, oh, what did I do that? How did that come by? Because the will have not been controlled. It's not been subjected to the will of your heart. And that's what happened to Adam and Eve. And the devil came and said some words. They were manipulated in their intellect. They had a rumination in the mind of their head. So also today, every one of us, we make decisions academically, career-wise, talking about getting into marriage, and getting involved in the issues of life. We rush into things, and we come back and say, ha, why did I do that? And that's what happened that day. And they were deceived. And their response to what the devil said that day was processed only here. And they are because you know, remember, Adam and Eve were created holy. Everybody say, created holy. They were created holy. And they were also given free will to make a choice. And then, because they failed to allow their heart to be in direct control of the intellect, the issue became they eating the forbidden fruit. And when they ate the forbidden fruit, the forbidden fruit further empowers the ability of the flesh in the brain to resist the condition of the heart. Hallelujah. They become rebellious. Their intellect become rebellious against the meditation, the will of the heart. Hallelujah. And so God saw this whole thing and said, what can I do to restore the sanity to humanity? Now, listen carefully. We're going somewhere. Jesus sent his only begotten son. And when he sent his only begotten son, he died, resurrected. And you can remember what he said. I'm going to be reading from John chapter 5, verse 30. Say, I can of myself do nothing. As I hear, I judge. My judgment is righteous because I do not seek my own will but the will of the Father who sent me. So at that point, Jesus made it clear that the will of the flesh, hallelujah, the will of a man uninspired by the Holy Ghost will disappoint. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Are you following me? So it means that God corrected the issue that happened in the Garden of Eden when the forbidden fruit was eaten. And that's what I'm going to do is to load the will of man with an extraordinary availability of his own personal will. When, it's, when he load them, they now decide. He's still going to give them the free will to make a choice. They now decide to allow the will that they, that they are at to allow their will to decide what is his own will that, is, that he loads their heart with. Now let me get back to the will of the flesh. We're going to clarify things. That these are interwoven. First John chapter 2, verse 16. First John chapter 2, verse 16. For all that is in the world, the loss of the flesh, the loss of the eyes, and the pride of life, it is not of the Father, but of the world. Now look at it. What is the work of the will of the flesh? Look at it. We are told here, the will 
of the flesh lusts. Hallelujah. So it's actually dangerous to totally depend on our intellect to make life choices for ourselves, for our life. It's very, very dangerous. Hallelujah. He said, a lost. What is the meaning of lost here? What is the meaning of lost? Lost means to live in an uncontrollable pleasure. Controllable life. For example, such as living to eat. You know some people, they live in their life to eat. That is a controllable, pleasurable living. Hallelujah. Food is good. But when we overeat, when we think that the essence of our living in this life is for us to live to eat. But we actually, we, we are to eat to live. Amen. So the modesty and moderation. The act of, is, now look at what the Bible says. It's about self-control. Self I'm talking about the issue of self-control. That comes in when we are told to have all moderation observed. So a man who is living to eat is not moderate enough. And the food that is supposed to be good for living can turn out to be a poison to such a man. So what is happening here? The will of flesh doesn't help. Hallelujah. It helps a little, but we can't submit the, our whole control of our life to the will of the flesh. But if, because the flesh is not controllable. I told you that at the beginning, there was more empowerment on the will of the flesh because of the forbidden fruit eating. And when a man is born again, that head part, that intellect that is fully loaded with the will of the flesh, is no longer born again. The only thing that God did not allow to be born again, to be turned around, was that department of human life. But if a man is born again, we're talking about he being born of the spirit, all right? The spirit of God baptizing his spirit. Hallelujah. So the flesh is not born again. So our life then cannot be lived on that the control of flesh. And Paul went further and say, to be carnally minded is dead. To be spiritually minded is life. So our direction of life should not be guided by the will of the flesh. Because the flesh itself lusts against the control that comes from your heart. Hallelujah. Galatians chapter 5 verse 17. Galatians chapter 5 verse 17. I say then, walk in the spirit. And you shall not fulfill the loss of the flesh. Look at it. Lust of the flesh. The will of the flesh. For the flesh lost against the spirit. Look at it was there. The spirit there is not small letter. Okay. It's a capital letter S. Right? That is the Holy Spirit right there. So the flesh, the will of the flesh lost against the spirit. So why the seat of the spirit? The seat of the Holy Spirit is the spirit of man. Hallelujah. When a man is baptized of the Holy Spirit, his own spirit is baptized with the Holy Spirit. That's what it means. To be baptized with the Holy Spirit is to have, have your spirit baptized with the Holy Spirit. And what is the purpose of that? The purpose of that is to redeem the spirit of man that must go back to God who created it to give account. Of the life living of the man in the soul. Hallelujah. That is the purpose of that. And God came through his son Jesus Christ. And did that appropriately well. I'm still going to go back there. But the spirit against the flesh. Now look at it. The Holy Ghost himself also wage war. Amen. In order to control. The will of the flesh. Let's follow me. And these are contrary one to another. So that you do not do things that you wish. 
So it's possible for a man to live a two-nation life. Hallelujah. Uh, when a man subjects himself to the leadership of his, the will of the flesh in his head, that's one nation. When a man subjects himself to the will of the Holy Ghost in his spirit, inside his heart, giving direct will of God into his mind for his will to take, and use and make decision. That's another nation. Hallelujah. So to lose is to be absorbed in an unbridled craving, pleasure, sex, and all the rest. First Timothy chapter five verse six. First Timothy chapter five verse six. But she who lives in pleasure is dead while she lives. So for that confirmation that we cannot subject our life. To the leadership of our intellect that's why the bible makes us understand because the intellect the more the intellect searches search about god the less he know about god and that's why the bible said there is no searching of god understanding so you man cannot dear god and try to find god in research the more the deeper you go the more disappointed you are the more the will of the flesh is empowered to fight against god we see people that are really very professorial, very knowledgeable, but foolish. The Bible says, the foolish says in his heart, there is no God. Hallelujah. I see people that are really well knowledgeable, well rich. You know, but because they trust, they want to try to find a way to trust God with their intellect. And uh, so, such kind of part did not advantage them then number two the will of man matthew 21 28 to 31 but what do you think a man had two sons i'm going to demonstrate that with you right now and he came to the first and said son go walk today in my vineyard verse 29 and then as i said i will not look at what he said he decide i will not let's see what follows but afterward he regretted and it went hallelujah praise the lord he regretted it and it went now what do you think is interplay there the response of that man being given instruction to do something and saying i will not go that response comes from the department of the head spontaneity from the will of the flesh but afterward after meditation after thinking through that is the will of man in charge this time around hallelujah the man changed his mind what does he change his mind the spirit of god in the spirit opened up the will of God into his mind and the will of his mind decide to say okay no this is not right I've, I've said something wrong I'm going to go there hallelujah and I can see that eventually if you look at the second one if I can read that the second servant will happen then they came the second and said likewise second say I'm going to go too and he answered and said, I go, sir. But he did not go. All right. Now look at what Jesus said. Which of these two did the will of do the will of the Father? And of course, in the following verse, it was the one that said, I was not going to go, but eventually go. Now, God told Samuel, he said, God looked into the heart. Although a man looking at the appearance. The response of these two men, they are all coming. They are all coming from the department of the will of their flesh. That's where the response comes from. But the second response came from their own human will. Now, what is the difference between the first man and the second man? 
the first man has the Holy Ghost inside him, as the Spirit of God inside him, by that parable, that enlightened his mind and feed the will of him in his heart to make the right decision. Hallelujah. So, what essentially, what a man, the, the, the motive, I mean, what a man actually do is the motive of what they do. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. That's what the Bible says. God says, judge not by appearance. Judge the right judgment. So, the motive of the doing of things is actually the intent of a man. And the intent of a man is controlled by the will of a man. Now, it depends on whether the will of that man is being empowered by the will of God. How does the will of God come? The will of God comes by the baptism of the Holy Spirit in the spirit of that man. Constantly feeding the mind of that man to know what to do right. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. I hope you are following me. The will of man. Isaiah chapter 29 verse 13. Isaiah 29 verse 13. Therefore the Lord said, in as much as these people draw near with their mouths and honor me with their lips, but have removed their heart from me, and their fear towards me is taught by the commandment of men. See what's going on here? So it's possible for the internet to be at work, but yet the will of God is not at work. It's possible to do things in life, and yet the things are not really directed, agreed with by God. So it's very important to understand this. There are two nations in humanity. The nation of the will of the flesh, and the will of the man, either being inspired by God or not. Hallelujah. The will of man in the heart of a man feeds the rulership, is fed by the rulership of the Holy Spirit upon the spirit of the man. So for a man to live without the Holy Ghost is to live without self-control. Hallelujah. For a man to live without the Holy Spirit is to live without being guided in life. For a man to live without the Holy Ghost for a man to live with a life of hopelessness. For a man to live without the Holy Spirit. Is to live in the vacancy of their mind. As what Paul said. He said that the unbeliever. They live in the vacancy of their mind. They live without shepherd. They live without direction. And as I will see people staying in their room and killing themselves. Because there is no will of God. Really there in them to instruct them what is right hallelujah the will of man so the will of man can be subjected to the control of the devil or either to the control of god hallelujah how do you measure devil in this whole matter devil comes in through the interface that exists between your heart and the world the interface is the will of the flesh it is the will of the flesh that the devil communicates with with his own will. And if we allow our life to be guarded by the will of the flesh, then we make wrong decision in life as Adam and Eve made that decision. Everybody say, devil does not jump into my heart. Devil does not know what goes on in my heart. Let me tell you something today. Don't make a mistake devil cannot know what is going on in your heart <laughs> but he can know what is going on in your head because your head is weak amen your intellect is weak the mind of your head is weak the will of the flesh is weak hallelujah and it provide every possible information that the will of the flesh receives you want to process it amen 
So a life of a man without self-control is just going to be live in all format of processing of the will of the flesh. In order to manipulate the, the today, the now, and the tomorrow of the man. Hallelujah. Are you going with me today? Hallelujah. This all need to be said because you don't want to go out there and get confused about what the will of God is all about. Okay, a differentiated from the will of man. Proverbs chapter 16, verse 32. Proverbs 16, verse 32. Say, He who is slow to anger is better than the mighty. And he who, he who rules his spirit than he who, than he who takes a city. Look at that very well. Now, look at the spirit there. It's a small letter. It starts with a small, small case. Spirit. That's your own man's spirit. That's not the spirit of God. Now, and I say, he that rules his spirit. How do you rule your spirit? By being baptized with the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. When you are baptized with the Holy Ghost, the Holy Ghost make available the word of God, the will of God into your heart that your heart can meditate. And then your own personal human will can decide to make right decision, right judgment in life. Praise the Lord. Amen. Now, if you look at the translation here, New Living Translation, better a patient person than a warrior. Okay? One with self control than one who takes a city. See? Look at the translation. All right? It's already ruled his spirit, but here the translation says, have a control what self-control now remember in the book of galatians chapter five said the fruit of the spirit is self-control everybody say self-control now how do you get a self-control you get a self-control because the holy ghost has baptized your spirit hallelujah the holy ghost is ruling your spirit and so it's because the holy ghost is in, is in your spirit then you can get the will of God. You can understand what the will of God is. You are not confused. Onto what the will of God is all about. Somebody is saying that I am not able to know what I need to do about the situation. Get closer to the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. The Holy Ghost provides information to your spirit. And is sent to your mind of your heart. Okay, as a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. Amen. That means there is a mind inside the heart of a man. How can you use a, a heart to think? Don't make a mistake. Don't let this kind of theories and philosophy deceive you. The scripture is clear and perfect about this concept. As a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. <laughs> Hallelujah. So there is a mind in the heart of man. So the mind is waiting, very flexible, very elastic waiting to receive instruction hallelujah that's what the holy ghost provides and now your will decide to take that because the availability of god's will in your heart then the holy ghost take i mean then the will as, as a man the will of a man takes it when the will of a man takes instruction from god what happened to your head your head is under control what does that mean you have a self-control hallelujah so your head do not decide your business of life. But the spirit of God decides your business of life. Amen. The Bible says, Bible say, walk not after the flesh. Walk after the spirit. Hallelujah. Say, walk in the spirit that you will not fulfill the lusts of the what? Of the flesh. Hallelujah. Finally, the will of God. The will of God draws from the thought of God. God cannot do anything without his thought. His power of reaching, choosing, desiring, and intending draws from his own thought. Hallelujah. So let's see what the Bible says about God's thought. Jeremiah chapter 29 verse 11. For I know the thought I have, I think towards you says the lord the thought of peace and not of evil to give you future and a hope 
Look at that. So the thought of God is very reliable. Why the new need for you to have the Holy Ghost baptize you and lead your life? Why the need for the will of God? Because the thought of God is reliable. Hallelujah. Why is it reliable? Okay. The will of God ensures peace. It ensures good future. And it ensures hope in your home. Hallelujah. So that's the need for the will of God to be taken. Now let's look at what Jesus demonstrated. I'm going to read that again. John chapter 5 verse 30. John chapter 5 verse 30. I can of myself do nothing. How can Jesus, the son of the creator of the whole world, could say this? How could he say this? How could he say this? How could he say this? He said, I can of myself do nothing. He didn't say, I can of myself not preach the gospel. Not just that. I can of myself not sleep. Is I can of myself do nothing. So there's nothing in this world that he can do by himself. That sounds like weak, right? That sounds like a word from a lazy man, right? But unfortunately, it's a word of strength. It's a word that determines our destiny. Hallelujah. Now what he say? He said, as I hear, I judge. Where is he hearing from? He's hearing from the Spirit of God over his spirit, giving the ideas of what God is, will of God is about into his mind, and he's taking from that mind and taking control of his own entire life. And what he say? As I hear, I judge. And my judgment is righteous. Some of us today will make mistakes a lot because we do not give ourselves up to the Holy Ghost to control us. The only way to live holy is to allow the Holy Ghost to be in total control of our life. Some people, their husband, their wife is right beside them. But because they are very absent in the spirit, they couldn't see. Hallelujah. You cannot see with your physical eyes. The eyes are actually seeing life in the spiritual eyes. So what is in the, with the word? Is the loss of the eyes. What you can see, what your will of flesh can see, is all loss. It's all distraction. So we cannot allow our lives to be determined by the feelings that our head is suggesting. Hallelujah. Jesus corrected the whole mistake. Amen. God broke his law, sent his own begotten son to the world. And then here he, he, here he told us the right thing to be done to help us to live a life that pleases God. Wonderful. Hallelujah. Wonderful. As I hear, I judge. Everybody say, as I hear, I judge. Where is he hearing from? Was somebody by his side? No. The Holy Ghost inside him. The will of God that he hears from the Holy Spirit. Baptizing his spirit. Son of man. Being transformed by the Spirit of God. Receiving the will of God to control the intellect. Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. I'm so excited with this. Say, and my judgment is righteous. My judgment is righteous. Because I receive direction from the Holy Spirit. Because I do not seek my own will. Now look, look at what he said again. Because I do not seek my own will. What kind of will is that? The will of man. Amen. Because the son of man, God also allowed the will of man to be in Jesus Christ as well. Amen. Remember when he was being baptized, the Holy Ghost came upon him too. A great example. Hallelujah. Telling us that every Christian who must count himself as a son, a child of God, must be baptized with the Holy Ghost as well. Hallelujah. See what John the Baptist said? He said, I baptize you with water, but he that is greater than I is coming, whose shoes I cannot loosen. He is the one that will baptize you with what? With the Holy Ghost and with fire. That was demonstrated as soon as Jesus Christ appeared before John the Baptist. Here's a reference point here. I did not seek my own will, but the will of the Father who sent me. How does he get the will of God done? How does he know the will of God? How does he get that will of God? Because something is whispering to him. Hallelujah. That is the Holy Spirit. Father's Day. Fathers need to rule their home. 
with the will of God. If a home needs to follow the, the life of God, peace of God, hope that God gives, that home has to be controlled and led by the will of God. If a Christian wants to have a peace for the rest of his life, that Christian must embrace what will of God is. Hallelujah. This might appear theoretical, but this is the real truth of the scripture. Hallelujah. You might not be hearing this too much. Or God revealed to me clearly. This is the secret of living holy. Hallelujah. This is a secret of living a life that pleases me. Amen. And I'm going to go over this over this again if I have more time. Amen. To load you up with this. Because it is the secret of your prosperity. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It is the secret of our prosperity. Secret of our prosperity. The secret of our prosperity. Now, what are the constituents of this will of God? The constituent of this will of God. Do well. Hallelujah. God wants us to do well. Amen. God doesn't want you to fail academically. Amen. God wants you to do well. Everybody say, do well. Our oh, people think that when we are be, become born again, a Christian, we have to, we to, we to live a life of pauper. No. I mean, we are told in the scripture, Jesus went about, okay, doing good. Everybody say, doing good. Healing all manner of sickness and disease. It is the will of God for us to go around and healing people, preaching the gospel. Amen. The Spirit of God is upon me, for it's anointed me to preach the gospel. Okay? To heal the broken hearted, to set the captive free, to let the oppressed grow. Hallelujah. The will of God is for us to rise up this challenge. Go and honor minister to people. The will of God is for us to be healthy. Amen. I wish you, brethren, that you prosper, even as your soul prospers. God wants us to embrace this. These are all wills of God. But this thing don't come to be if we want to live our life in the department of our head. If we want the flesh to take control. We cannot reason God out. All we need to do is to engage the Holy Spirit and live the will of God on earth. Everybody say, live the will of God on earth. It's too long that the unbelievers and this when the people in the world are telling us we are unqualified people. We are not fit to enjoy the benefits of, of being here. But God is saying that's not my will for you. Amen. Hallelujah. The will of God. Hallelujah. The will of God is to bring God into life in choosing of your partner in life. The will of God. People don't want to choose uh, by the will of God. They want to choose by what they think. Amen. It doesn't work. Amen. Most of the time, the will of God doesn't choose for you what you like most. I'm so sorry to say that. Hallelujah. Someone that's attractive to you is not going to be your husband or wife. I'm so sorry. I mean, God can sometimes, coincidentally, give you somebody who eventually is going to be very beautiful. But if it's not beautiful at the first sight, you're going to discover the real beauty later. Amen. See, you cannot use your eyes to determine who to be your partner. Hallelujah. We've got to cry upon the will of God. Jesus said, I'll drop my own will. I've hung upon your will. I said, without you, I can do nothing. Hallelujah. I said, yeah, I judge. And my judgment is right. Because I judge according to the will of God. Will of God is for the husband to love his wife. It's the will of God. That will be done in our home. Husband to love his wife. Ephesians chapter 5 verse 25. Say, husband, love your wife. Just as Christ also loved the church. And gave himself for her. Hallelujah. Submit to your husband. Amen. In the future, you are going to get married. The will of God is for you to be submissive. They will take the Holy Ghost in you. Helping you out in doing this. Hallelujah. Submit to your husband. Amen. Ephesians chapter 5, verse 21. Chapter 5, verse 22 to 23. Wives submit to your husband as to the Lord. Verse 23. For the husband is the head of the wife, as also Christ is the head of the church, and is the savior of the body. The will of God in our home. Hallelujah. Abstain from every form of immorality. Amen. To give ourselves to the will of the flesh 
is to believe in a life that is uncontrollable. Self-control is lost. We need to abstain from immorality. When our life is given up to the flesh, we lose our self-control. First Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 3 to 6. First Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 3 to 6. For this is the will of the God, your sanctification, that you should abstain from sexual immorality. Only those who can abstain from sexual immorality and live a holy life are the ones who allow their life to be lived by the will of God. Amen. Those who can give their own will to God to take control of. Hallelujah. What is the will of God? Worship of God. Amen. First Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 18. Give thanks in all circumstances, for this is the God's will for you in Christ Jesus. Rise up on your feet today. That will be done in our home. We are going to pray and say, Lord, I submit myself into the total control of your will today. My will is not important anymore. Not even talk about my, my, the, the will of the flesh in my head. I give everything to you today to take correct control of it. I don't want my head to compete with me. I don't want my head to take over me. I deliver my own man's will, my human will to you, to be controlled by your will today. Father, I give them to you. I give them to you. Even when I'm faced with the challenges, I'm not being ob absorbed by the challenges. I'm not being defeated by the challenges because your will controls me. Begin to pray. I give myself to you today, Lord. No more will the will of the flesh control me. I give my will to you today, Lord. No more the will of the flesh control me. I give my will to you today, Lord. No more the will of flesh controls me. No more. I resist control of the will of the flesh today. I resist the control of the will of the flesh. Strengthen my will today by your spirit. I receive your will into my life. Into every department of our life, oh God, academically, career-wise, my future, every endeavor, every pain, event of my life, from now on, will be controlled by your will. In the name of Jesus Christ, empower my will today and drop my own human will for your will to be in prevalence. I can be in control of my own affair. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name, we have declared. Father, we thank you today for the word that you've spoken. The entrance of your word gives it light and understanding. And everyone who have heard this word today, their liberty is proclaimed in Jesus' name. Every torment in your dream, every torment in your endeavors in this campus, every torment in your imagination that is telling you there's no way out, that you are cornered, there's no way you can step out and please God. Today I pray. I confront them with the will of God today. They shall be shut up and destroyed in Jesus name. Let the will of God take over your spirit, your soul, your mind in the name of Jesus Christ. From now on you shall be in control of your head. You shall be in control of the will of the flesh. Thank you Father. In Jesus name we have declared. Put your hand together for the Lord. The Lord is good.